All right, in this video, we're going to talk about projectile motion and parametric equations. So we're going to use our parametric equations to model a projectile motion situation. So we're going to talk about things like I have up in pink here. Uh, we're going to find the initial velocities. We're going to figure out how long the projectile is in the air, how far it travels, um, how long it takes for it to hit the ground, basically, and then how far it is away from the, uh, the its initial time when it left. And also we'll talk about gravity and how that affects projectile objects or projectiles in the air and how that how we can make an equation to model that. So we're going to deal with one situation here. And this one example is going to cover pretty much everything we need to know for this part of uh, projectile motion. So we've got world-renowned cricket player Charlie Harris from Auckland, New Zealand hits the ball with an exit velocity of 44 meters per second with an angle relative to the horizontal of 27 degrees. When he hits the ball, it is a half a meter off the ground. So we've got this cricket player, Charlie Harris, who hits the ball at an exit velocity, a speed of 40 meters per second, and it's leaving at an angle of 27 degrees. So let's draw a picture for this. I've got what we, you know, the ground here. And here's Charlie standing right here, and he hits the ball. It goes up, comes down, and then it splats on the ground. And so uh, what we want to do is we want to figure out how long did it take to hit the ground? How far did it travel away from Charlie? Uh, you could also figure out things like how high was it in the air? We're not going to talk about that in this video, but that's one other thing you could figure out. Um, and depending on where you're at in your math, if you're a calculus student, you might be able to do some of this with calculus. This is going to be looking at it as more of a pre-calculus uh, viewpoint. So one of the things that we are going to talk about are the initial velocities of this situation. And so in order to do that, we are going to draw a triangle. So let's start out. Here's the ball that Charlie hit, and it left the bat at an initial velocity of 44 meters per second. And so what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what was the x velocity. So what I mean by x velocity is how far is it traveling away from Charlie? And then we're going to figure out the y velocity, how far away or how fast it's moving up in the sky. And eventually gravity is going to push it down and it's going to come traveling back down. but uh, we'll figure out both of those initial velocities. That means what's happening right as the ball is being hit. So let's start with the horizontal initial velocity. And typically we use a symbol V for velocity, and then we do sub X. That means the X direction. And then this, if you're familiar with vectors or physics, we're going to use the vector symbol. It's like a, a half arrow. And then these bars that that symbol basically just means how the initial horizontal velocity so what we're going to do is solve this and i'm dealing with so here's our 27 degree angle and we're dealing with the adjacent side and the hypotenuse side so that tells me i'm going to use cosine cosine is adjacent cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse so our theta here is 27. And the adjacent side is going to be that initial x velocity or horizontal velocity. And then the hypotenuse is 44. So if I multiply by 44 on both sides, I end up with 44 times cosine of 27 degrees equals the initial velocity in the horizontal direction or the x direction which gives me let's see here uh i've got that ready to go it's 39.2 meters per second and i just type that in my calculator All right, so we've got our initial horizontal velocity. So now let's figure out what our initial vertical velocity would be. 
And what that means is I'm going to draw that same triangle that we had for the horizontal velocity. You could use the exact same triangle. I'm just not wanting to make things too messy. I should probably try to make it look like about the same angle. There we go. 44 meters per second. We already have the X figured out. Now we're going to figure out the Y. And as you probably would guess, it's a V sub Y with a vector symbol and the bars. So what we want to do is figure out that. We know we have a 27 degree angle still. And so now we're dealing with opposite and hypotenuse. So that means we're going to be using the sine of theta. The sine of theta is opposite divided by hypotenuse. So uh, to deal with this, we're going to do sine of 27 equals the opposite, which is v sub y, that initial vertical direction. And what I mean is that this is what we're solving for is how fast is it moving up at the initial uh, moment of impact? And then divided by the hypotenuse, which is 44. So v sub y, the initial vertical velocity, how fast it's moving up, is 44 times sine of 27. Just multiply by 44 on both sides. And when I type that in my calculator, I get uh, 19.98 meters per second. So just so we're understanding, what we just figured out is how fast this ball is moving up when it's hit. And then for the other one, for the V sub X that I'm circling in purple, this is telling me how far it's moving away from Charlie Harris when he first hits it. So, and when I say away, I mean in the X direction, away from him, whereas the Y is moving up in the air. All right, so that's called the initial velocities. That's happening ex at the moment of impact when he hits the ball. This is exactly what's happening at that time. So what we're going to do is we're going to use those initial velocities. We're going to talk about, you know, use those to figure out how long it takes for that ball to hit and how far it travels once it hits the ground. So the next question is, how long is the ball in the air? And so what we're going to do is we're going to use kind of that same diagram uh, and we're going to use, we're going to come up with some equations that tell us how far things travel. So if you think about, like, if you're driving in a car and you're traveling at 60 miles per hour and you go for one hour, that's obviously 60 miles, right? So uh, we're, we're going to use kind of that same formula where if we're traveling, it's the distance traveled is initial horizontal velocity. So how fast that ball is moving when it's hit times how long it's in the air, so times time. So in this situation, the distance traveled per x is going to be, I'll grab my pen here, the initial horizontal velocity, which is 39.2 times time, which is just t. So this is the first part of my parametric equation. I have the x portion of my parametric equation. The next part is going to be dealing with how it's behaving up and down. So what we're assuming horizontally is that there's no wind that's going to affect it. There's no air particles that are going to slow it down or affect how it, ha how it moves horizontally. We're just going to assume that it's moving horizontally without any other influence. But with vertical, there are other influences. And those influences, as we know, are called gravity. So we need an equation to help us figure out how does this move in terms of how gravity is affecting it. So that gravity equation is going to be this. It's going to be the initial height, how high off the ground the projectile is, plus the initial vertical velocity. So how fast it's moving up times time, just like we did for the horizontal. So that's going to you know, affect how fast it's moving up, basically. But then minus gravity. So gravity is going to pull this down toward the ground, and eventually this thing's going to hit the ground. So this ball is going to eventually fall, as we all know. Hopefully that's not news to anybody. And so gravity, if you're dealing in metric, that's about 9.8 meters per second squared. 
if you're dealing uh, in feet or in standard, it's going to be 32 feet per second squared. So it all depends on what units are. In this example, we're dealing with meters. So we are going to be dealing with the 9.8 meters per second squared. So these things, these equations, the X, Y, and gravity stuff, if you're taking notes, these would be great things to take notes on. Uh, the gravity never changes. It's always 9.8 meters per second squared. It's always 32 feet per second squared. So uh, our equation is going to be y equals 0 0.5, because it was a half a meter off the ground. That's the initial height. Um, actually, hold on. Let's back up here. We're going to use symbols first. So the initial height we typically call h sub 0. And depending on what textbook you use, it might be, have a different name. But And then the initial vertical velocity, we call that V sub Y with those bars times T. And then minus gravity. And the way we do gravity is we do one half times the force of gravity, which would be one of these two things, times time squared. So that's going to be your general equation. For this situation, give myself a little bit of room here, it's going to be 0 0.5 plus 19.98 times t minus one half of gravity would be, so half of 9.8 is 4.9, and then t squared. So for this situation, this is going to be our y part of our parametric equation. So now we have our parametric equations. We've got our x and y parametric equations. And this is how a projectile motion parametric equations is always going to be set up. You're going to have the x the same way and the y the same way each time. All right, so let's start answering some questions about what happened as this ball was hit. So it says, how far did the ball travel horizontally? Well, uh, we're going to use the equation we just came up with is going to be x equals 39.2 times t. And to figure that out, we need to know when did the ball hit the ground. Well, the problem is we don't know when it hit the ground. So we're going to have to use the second equation to figure out how long it was until it hit the ground. I'm going to do that over on the side here. We'll use green y equals 0 0.5 plus 19.98 t minus 4.9 t squared. So this is our horizontal, or excuse me, our vertical equation. And what we want to know is when does this hit the ground? So in other words, when is y equal to 0? Because that's when it hits the ground is when y equals 0. Well, I see a quadratic equation, so now I know I can use the quadratic formula to figure this out. So it's going to be t equals negative b plus or minus a square root of, that's a plus, b squared minus 4ac, 19.98, b squared minus 4a, which is negative 4.9. C, which is 0 0.5, all of that over 2a, which is 2 times negative 4. So this is going to be what we type in to solve for uh, how long it takes for it to hit the ground. And when I type this into the quadratic formula, you guys can do that. If you're not sure how, then you know, watch a video on quadratic formula. Um, but there is going to be two answers. So there's the first answer is negative 0 0.02, and the other answer is 4.10. Well, the first answer, negative 0 0.02, if you think about, if we look back at this, that would mean that if you went back in time, the ball would hit the ground then. So basically, it's accounting for the, you know, that's where the ball was hit from, but since it was hit off the ground, that's why it's a little bit negative. So we're not going to use that answer. The 4.10 is how long it took for that to hit the ground. 
So that means the ball was in the air for 4.10 seconds. So how far did it have travel horizontally? Back to this question. Well, we just plug in. So we got 39.2 and we plug in 4.10. And when we plug that in, we get 160.7 meters. So this ball was hit 160.7 meters. So in order to do this, I needed to solve for time with the y equation because that tells me when it hit the ground. And then I plug that back into the x equation and that tells me how far it traveled. All right. And then you might see a question come up like this where it says the fence in center field is 120 meters away. When will the ball reach the fence? So we're talking now about the horizontal distance. It says it's 120 meters away. That's how far away horizontally. So that means we've got 120 equals 39.2 times t. How long does it take for this to get to 120? So we're going to divide by 39.2. And we get a t value of 3.06 seconds. So. If this ball gets hit over the fence in center field, it takes 3.06 seconds to get to the fence. Well, so let's, the next question is, what if the fence is five meters tall? Will it clear the fence or will it hit the fence? And so if it's five meters tall, we're talking about the horizontal, or sorry, the vertical. So that means that our, uh, we need to figure out how high is it at 3.06 seconds. So in order to do that, we're going to use the y equation, and that's 0 0.5 plus 19.98 times t, which is 3.06, minus 4.9 times t squared, which is 3.06 squared. So we want to figure out how high in the air is the ball after 3.06 seconds. And to figure out how high in the air the ball is, we're going to use the vertical equation or the y equation. And when I plug that in, I get y equals, I just type it in my calculator, I get 15.75. So the question is, will the ball clear the fence? And the answer is yes, it will clear the fence. Why? because at 3.06 seconds, when the ball reaches the wall, it is 15.75 meters off the ground Try to model good answers for you and excuse me which is 10.75 meters higher than the fence meters higher than the fence so this is what an answer would look like if they asked this question. It would explain how you know it's going to clear the fence because it's higher than the fence at that moment. So we pretty much covered everything we needed to. We talked about how to find the initial velocity, how to find the x and y horizontal and vertical equations, and then we applied both of those equations to answer some of those situations. So I hope this helped. It might be a video you need to watch a couple times to make sure you get the gist of it. Sorry for the extremely long video, but uh, this is parametric equations with projectile motion.